Hello and welcome to my Azure Quick Hits video series. Today I'm going to show you how to configure the Microsoft Azure Backup Server so that it can be used to backup and restore workloads from AVS. So our lab looks like an AVS environment with two machines that we're going to back up, MG Server 01 and 02. It's connected through ExpressRoute to a VWAN hub. Uh, there's actually two hubs in this VWAN, but we're only worried about the one in the lower one here, the West US. And then we have two peered VNets. One has a domain controller in it, and the other one has the backup server. And then finally, we have a recovery services vault here that's going to be a dotted line connection to the MAB server. Right? And that's where we're going to put our long-term storage. I have pre-created a server called the AVS Azure Backup Server that we just saw in the diagram. And one of the first tasks you need to do is decide how much disk you need for the short-term storage. This is five to seven days of online storage that's going to be maintained in the AVS backup server. So there is a tool that's linked in the comments to calculate how big that disk should be. So for our test, we're just going to add a simple disk. I'm going to call it a backup disk. The guidance in the, uh, in the documentation is to choose standard. Click on save. Now when I RDP into that machine, click on the start menu, click on disk, and click on create format hard disk partitions. And if we scroll down a little bit, we're going to see that four byte disk. And we're going to go new simple volume. Next, 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 finish. And we now have a new three or four gig, 3.98 gigabyte volume available to us. So now we've got our disks available. The next thing we need to do is configure a recovery services vault. So let's go back to the portal. And I've actually got mine here, but I'll show you how easy it is to create this. Literally click on create, choose the resource group you want. Make sure it's in the same region as the AVS environment. You don't want to be sending backups to the backup server interregionally. And then name your vault. And then just click review and create, and that's it. So ours is called AVS Recovery Services Vault. Now we've created the vault, click on it, open the vault, and select backup. Where is your workload running? We're gonna choose on-premises and we're gonna choose VMware Virtual Machine. Prepare infrastructure. And at this point, it gives us the option to download the Azure backup server. So click on download and then click on download again once this web page launches. And then we're gonna choose all the files. We wanna download everything. And once this is complete, we'll continue. So I'm gonna open my downloads folder I can close this tab now. And then from the downloads folder, I'm going to run the application, the installer. All right, click next. I accept the agreement, click next. That sounds good. And then extract. And once that's finished, click finish. Now, before we do anything else, we need to go to server manager and install the .NET 3.5 suite. So open up server manager. Add roles and features. Next, 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 next. There we go. Next, install. And then once that finishes, you can click close. Doesn't require a server reboot. And then close server manager. Now choose your C drive. Go to System Center, Microsoft Azure Backup Server, click again, and come down until we find the setup program. We're gonna choose Azure Backup Server and wait while this extracts. On the welcome screen, we'll click Next. Complete the check to make sure we meet the basic requirements. Install a new instance of SQL. Of course, you can use your own if you want. Do a check and install. And we actually have an error message saying PowerShell has to be installed. We just need to restart the computer. So restart and run the application again. Okay, let's do that. Okay, we're back. So I'm gonna run setup again, and I'm gonna zoom through this bit. All right, let's try that check and install again. Looks good. So I'm gonna accept the defaults. Password for the SQL. I 
I will use Microsoft Updates and click Install. So I don't have a proxy, so I'll click Next, Install. All right, we're complete. It says uh, Azure Recovery Service Agent has been installed. Click Next to register the server with the Azure Backup Vault. So we're going to click Next. All right, and when that's done, we're going to be asked for the Vault credentials. So to find the Vault credentials, let's go back to the Azure portal, and we're going to look for Settings and Properties. And then at the bottom of this, we're going to see Backup Credentials, already using the latest Service Recovery Agent, which we are because we just downloaded this, and then click on Download. And that's going to download a file into our downloads directory. So we know it's in the downloads directory, so we'll just minimize the portal again. We'll go browse, and we're gonna choose downloads. And there's our credentials. Then click next. So here we need a recovery passphrase. Must be at least 16 characters long and a location to store the passphrase. So I'm gonna put it on the temp directory, but it's a good idea to have it on a different server or stored in a key vault. So it's gonna give me a warning about that, that's fine. So here the server is actually contacting the recovery services vault. All right, and it looks like we've successfully completed this. Note that you must restart the computer to complete the DPM installation. All right, let's do that. So now the server's rebooted. We've got an icon on the desktop for Microsoft Azure Backup Server. So we'll start that. And the first thing to do is to click on Management and then click on Disk Storage and then do a rescan nothing so we'll click on add and here we're going to see our 4 gig volume that we created okay we get a message about dpm will format the volume that's fine our friendly name is going to be backup disk and then once that's complete we're going to see that as an available disk for us so the next step is to create a secure connection to the vCenter server so to do that we need to get to our browser and we're going to type in the IP address of the vCenter server. Right? This is the Azure SDDC. So in my case, that's going to be HTTPS 10.40.140. Now, don't launch the vSphere client because what we actually want is here, the downloaded root CA certificates. And if you click on that, it downloads it into the browser. So if you right click and click Save As, and then you can put in certs, or maybe just call it ABS certs, save it. And once that's done, we can open the folder and we're gonna see one called ABS certs here. Open that up, click on certs, click on windows. That's where the two certificates are. We can now close the browser. So go back to the ABS certs folder, uh, sorry, one further to the ABS certs here, right click and say extract all. And we're gonna put them in the temp directory again. Now, if we go to the C colon temps, actually it does it for you. You can click on certs, click on windows, and you're gonna see this top one is the root cert, ends with a dot zero. We need to rename that, remove the dot zero, and put in a CRT. Once that's done, we're gonna right click, install certificate, click on open, click on local machine, next, place the certificate in the following store, and choose the trusted root certificate authorities. Click next, click finish. And we will get a message saying the import was successful. All right, now we have to enable TLS on the backup server. And so to do that, it's pretty simple. Go to this URL, it's gonna be in the comments section at the bottom of the video. And what we wanna do is copy this, put it into a notepad, And we're going to save it as tls.reg and change this to all files. 
click on Save, and just note it's being put in the Documents folder here. So now, if we open up File Explorer again, and we go to the Documents folder, we're going to see this TLSREG, and then just double click on it. And then it's going to give you a warning message, and you say yes. It'll give you a message saying it has been successfully merged with the registry. And that's going to enable that TLS 1.2 for us. So now we can close this, close this, and return to the Azure Backup Server. Click on the production servers and select Manage VMware. Add credentials. So the credential name is going to be AVS Backup. Description, the uh, backup account. The username is going to be and the password is going to be all right click on add and then close the managed credentials next we have to actually add a vCenter server so make sure you're on the management blade click on production servers click on add choose VMware servers next choose the server name IP address so this is going to be in my case the 10.40.144.2 this is the IP of your vCenter from the AVS SDDC as shown and then choose the credential click on add click next click add and click close and you can see here that the agent status is okay so we've connected successfully so that's the end of the configuration in the next video I'm going to show you how to use protection recovery to actually protect your workloads and then recover them I hope you found this video helpful please leave likes and comments below